Uh, so good morning. I'm going to talk about uh, our proposal uh, for a federated uh, keystone for OpenStack, uh, federated system for OpenStack. Uh, so this is work that has been done by three students uh, of mine at PSIT, uh, Anush, Meghna, and Pramod. Uh, and of course, I'm Dinkar. Uh, so first, quickly on what we mean by federation. Uh, so we've got a number of uh, different clouds. And each one of them has their own identity provider and services. And uh, if you are able to access resources among themselves, uh, then that's what we mean by federation. An association comprising any number of service providers and uh, identity providers. Uh, so I'll talk about some of the things we've tried to do in doing this. Uh, we've tried to keep it uh, very minimalistic in scope. Uh, because, you know, uh, rather than having a big bank kind of uh, federation, uh, we thought we'd keep it simple and, uh, you know, th th just focus only on federation, send, send that out to customers and then see how they like that users and if, and if people like it, uh, then we can always add more features. And we have tried to avoid complicating the design. Uh, we are leveraging well-known concepts like roles and so on and so forth. Uh, we're not introducing any new concepts, so people who are familiar, and as you can see when, when they go through the design, uh, this is similar to the way Keystone already actually works, uh, so that people who are already familiar with Keystone can easily understand uh, how our stuff works. Um, and uh, it's, of course, backward compatible with uh, our existing Keystone. And one important thing is we are keeping track of the user's original identity uh, when he goes to a remote cloud. And we feel that's important for security because uh, when, if, if the user is in cloud A and he makes a request in cloud B and his identity is lost, uh, we feel that's not a good design point. And I'll, at the end of the talk, I'll uh, talk a little bit of how we're thinking of supporting Amazon. Uh, so the reason for that is that Amazon, uh, you know, uh, I think recent estimates say that Amazon is about 80% uh, of the public cloud market and it's like a 600 pound gorilla. So we think a federation should uh, include not just uh, you know, OpenStack to OpenStack Federation, but also OpenStack to Amazon Federation. Uh, if we do only OpenStack to OpenStack Federation, uh, then users might say that, okay, that's interesting, but most of my uh, public cloud is in Amazon. And so I'll wait until you come with that. So there I'm just going to present our preliminary thoughts. It's not really well, it's not completely fleshed out as yet. And of course, I've solicited any feedback that you may have. Uh, so yeah, this is the primary use case we're thinking of, where uh, we have an enterprise cloud, like you know, it could be a banking company, or it could be any other uh, enterprise like uh, HP or IBM or anything else. And they need to access resources either in a public cloud like Amazon or Rackspace, uh, you know, the common use case of cloud bursting, or they want, uh, they have a separate cloud which is in the same enterprise, like in IBM, uh, maybe in IBM India there could be one cloud and in some other place there could be another cloud. Uh, so they want to access resources transparently across the two clouds. Uh, that's what we are, that's the uh, use case which we think is very common and that's the, the thing we're trying to target. Uh, so, uh, so basically, the way we are doing this uh, is we are uh, changing the current implementation of the way authorization rules are changed. So the current authorization is a three tuple, uh, which is uh, subject, privilege, and object. That's who it is, and you know the privileges and, and the object they're trying to identify. Uh, so we are making two changes in this, and to make it into a four tuple. Uh, the first is in the case uh, we are generalizing the idea of a role. Uh, so if you look at roles in Keystone today, it's very simple, sort of like system admin, net admin, or something like that. Uh, what we are generalizing the role to is to be a pair uh, consisting of an issuer and an actual role. Uh, so for example, uh, you could say you're a system admin at HP or a professor at PESIT or a professor at MIT. That's the issuer part. So uh, suppose I'm in a public cloud, like say Rackspace, then I could get a request and I could see 
that this person is a system admin at HP. And then uh, based on that, I could say, okay, I have Rackspace has an agreement with say HP uh, to do certain, to give the system admin certain privileges. So then system admin at HP is allowed to do certain things. You might get a request saying, okay, he's a system admin at IBM. Now Rackspace and IBM may have a different agreement among themselves. Uh, so then the system at the role system admin at IBM would have different privileges than system admin at HP and be able to access different resources. <coughs> so that I think is the main change we are doing. Uh, we are converting the role not just into a role but sort of like a role at, at cloud. Uh, so in a, uh, in a remote cloud, that is a cloud which is not your native cloud so to speak, uh, you are kind of tagged with which cloud you came from and that determines what kind of privileges you have. Uh, this kind of a similar concept to what you have in uh, you know, mobile phones, for example. Uh, if you have a mobile phone, <coughs> a GSM phone, it has a SIM, uh, you can actually uh, use the phone anywhere in the world. And the SIM, it, it has your, uh, it, your uh, phone number remains the same. It's just that you have a phone, the phone number is at, uh, for example, my phone number is from Airtel in India. And when I come to the US, I can use a phone, but uh, my phone number remains the same, uh, except that it's a phone number in India. It's, and uh, I can use the resources of the different phone networks that are uh, going through. Yeah, so this simply gives this uh, in more detail. Uh, we, the other change we made is that we have, uh, we've extended uh, the access rights to include an issuer, an issuer B, uh, I've already talked about the role, uh, the privilege, and the object. Uh, the issue B is for uh, uh, auditing kind of purposes. Uh, so we know who, uh, uh, role issue. So this this is the case where uh, somebody in Cloud A is trying to access a role and uh, resource in Cloud B. Uh, so the role uh, is uh, admin in in Cloud A, and issue B simply says who's the per who's the person in Cloud B who has given this uh, access privilege. So this gives uh, you know, the kind of a little more detail uh, about how we are doing this. Uh, if you look at the top, you've got uh, various policies and rules that might be stored in Keystone today. And so for example, if you look at the top one, it says rules dict abc colon role net admin. Uh, and that simply says that somebody who has a role of net admin can do certain things. Uh, if you come down uh, in the just below the line, which says our implementation, you see a similar rules disk which has a b, uh, which says a b c colon uh, role issuer a colon net admin. Uh, so what this means is the person who is net admin in cloud A, he has certain privileges in my cloud. Uh, so the flow over here is very similar to the Keystone token flow. Uh, so first of all, when a cloud wants to, uh, when a user in cloud A wants to, uh, uh, we assume that there are uh, gateways in each cloud uh, which will facilitate this interoperation. And when a user in cloud A wants to access a remote resource in B, that's uh, the simple flow over here. Uh, so what happens is the cloud sends to the uh, gateway in A, uh, gateway access token saying, uh, you know, I want to access a resource in cloud B. And so the, uh, the gateway sends back a token. Uh, once the gateway has the token, uh, it sends the token to the uh, gateway, uh, sorry, the numerous typos over here, uh, that should be gateway at B, uh, requesting a tenant access token saying which tenants can access. Uh, then the gateway at B will, uh, again contact uh, the gateway at A that should be uh, to validate the identity of the client. And then it sends a, back a list of all tenants. And then finally, there's a resource acquisition path uh, where the client sends the tenant token to the tenant and sends back the request for the resource. Uh, so this is very similar to the token flow that occurs when a user signs on uh, to Keystone, to OpenStack, uh, in that there's a number of flows with Keystone which eventually results in the user getting a token which represents all the, uh, which represents all the resources that they can access. Uh, so here we have a similar flow. There, there are two clouds in, in the middle of the, 
the two gateways in the clouds. Uh, first, the user talks to his gateway saying, what are the remote clouds I can access? Uh, once he gets the list of remote clouds, uh, then he talks to a remote cloud and says, which tenants and resources can I access? And it gets back a token representing that. Uh, so the flow is very similar to the existing Keystone flow. Uh, so now we'll talk about uh, a few simple things about how uh, you can uh, do this if you wanted, so how we can extend this concept uh, to support Amazon. I'll do that pictorially. Uh, so basically, again, you'll have the same kind of flow, uh, but since Amazon does not use tokens but uses access keys, uh, we need a proxy processor which will return the access keys to the user. Uh, so again, basically, the user will request Keystone and uh, get access to the gateway. And once it gets access to, access to the gateway, the gateway will talk to the proxy processor, which will talk to Amazon and return access keys to the user. Once the user has access keys, uh, they can continue and access uh, things in the Amazon cloud. Uh, so summary, we have tried to present a federation blueprint. And I think our main key point is very simple. Uh, it's uh, uh, Conceptually very simple. It is sort of a very, uh, works the way Keystone does right now. Uh, and uh, you know, it's backward compatible with the existing Keystone. Uh, one important feature is that we keep the user's original identity in the remote cloud uh, in the same way that the mobile number is kept track of. Your true mobile number is kept track of when using the mobile network. And of course, we, we think we can extend this to support Amazon uh, which we think is a major feature that we need to add if we are uh, going to support federation. Uh, so uh, that's what I had in terms of the talk. If uh, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, the proxy processor would run in Amazon as one of the users. Please go ahead. Yeah, so the mechanism would be standard for OpenStack to OpenStack because that's something we can control. Uh, but when it goes to different providers, since they're different cloud providers, uh, since they all will have their own authentication mechanism, uh, we need to somehow interface with that. Please go ahead. I, I believe there's a, uh, an existing blue, uh, blueprint in Keystone for federation uh, different models. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a talk on that topic later today. Was there, did you make any assessment on linking with that blueprint, comparing the two blueprints, doing anything like that? Uh, yeah, we are talking to the uh, uh, people who had the original blueprint. We also have a blueprint on this. And uh, so there are some differences between the models. Uh, <coughs> so uh, our model is very simple. It's focused very much on uh, federated keystone, which I think is a good thing because I think the correct way to uh, develop this is to first do federation in a simple model and then get the feedback and do it. Uh, also, our access rights are based on uh, uh, the role, which is a well understood concept uh, in security today. Uh, in the blueprint, you have to pass something called attributes, which I think are not, no, which I think is a concept not familiar to most systems administrators. I mean, if I went to a systems administrator in Bangalore and asked him uh, what's the role, he would be able to tell me. But if I say that in order to access a remote cloud, you have to pass attributes, you say what are attributes. I don't think anyone knows what that means. And <coughs> the existing blueprint creates temporary user ID, IDs when you go into the uh, remote cloud, uh, transient user IDs, we don't do that. We preserve uh, the actual user ID of the person so you know who's done each transaction. And uh, also the present blueprint supports something called recursion, whereby if you've got cloud A, cloud B, and cloud C, and B and C have an agreement, then A can access resources in C. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if that is really appropriate for an enterprise uh, kind of solution. Uh, because if I have an enterprise like HP or IBM and Amazon signs a, and I have stuff in Amazon, 
and Amazon signs an agreement with some other provider, uh, then if you suddenly, if Amazon suddenly say, well, we'll take your data and put it on that other provider, uh, as an enterprise, I might not be happy. Uh, because I, don't, I think security is really a big concern in uh, today's, uh, among enterprises in today's cloud space. And when people look at a cloud provider, they want to personally examine the security because they're doing things like uh, putting uh, you know, data in and so on. And they want to be sure they're secure. Uh, so we can support that model, but we're not thinking of supporting that model now. Uh, that can be on a roadmap in future, uh, keeping with our philosophy of you know, incremental development. Uh, but that's not in our model now, and we don't know if it's appropriate. Yeah, so we are we are not fully complemented the implementation of the model. Uh, we've uh, done whatever we need to the policy engine, and we are working on the gateways and the protocols. Uh, the most of the implementation is straightforward. The only uh, uh, minor challenge we had was in modifying the policy engine. Uh, so we kept most of it the same over there. The major challenge was that we are since we are changing the definition of roles. Uh, we had to change the way in which the policy engine parses roles and handles roles. But apart from that, most of the rest of the policy engine is uh, complete. I mean, uh, is untouched. Uh, if you have an uh, OpenStack Cloud and OpenStack Cloud, uh, you don't need a, pr a proxy processor because you, in each cloud you'll have a gateway uh, which talks. So the gateway sort of is like the proxy processor. It plays the role of the proxy processor. And we have another piece of this which is also under development. So this is the security infrastructure for accessing OpenStack Cloud from, uh, uh, for another OpenStack Cloud. Uh, we are trying to write uh, the software virtualization driver and so on which will allow you to actually make the request from one open stack cloud to another open stack cloud. So are there any other questions? Uh, So thank you very much.